This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at nHair. nHair is Maya's solution for adding hair to characters or animals. nHair is actually a system of curves with a paint effects shader applied to it. Because it's based on curves, we can actually use N hair for a variety of things and not just hair. The N signifies, just like with N cloth, that it is part of the nucleus system. Let's take a look at some of the basics of N hair, and I'm going to create just a primitive sphere, and we'll switch to N dynamics. Here we have a menu for N hair. And we'll open this up, and at the very top we have Create Hair. Let's open those tool options and take a look at what these do. Let's zoom up here, so when we create it we can see the hair closely. And at the very top we have Output, and we output as paint effects. And again, that's going to assign a paint effects shader directly to my curves. You could choose NURBS Curves, which would just generate a curve without any shader. Therefore, it would not be renderable. Or you could do a combination of both. We're just going to choose Paint Effects, which will generate a curve, but it's not the same as generating separate NURBS Curves. So let's just stick with Paint Effects. And we have two options here to either assign to a grid, and that grid is an artificial grid placed on your surface, or at selected surface points or faces. I don't have any components selected, so we're just going to add this as a grid to our surface. Because we're on grid, we can alter the U and the V count. And this will alter how many hair follicles are generated on the surface. So, simple math, 8 times 8, this is going to generate 64 follicles on the surface. Now, if I were to choose at selected surface points, those options would be grayed out because it would only be generating a follicle based upon the points or faces that I had selected. We'll stick with our grid, and let's go to hairs per clump. Now, out of each follicle comes a clump of hair. And we can define how many hairs exist in that clump. And this is great because it would be far too computationally expensive to add just as many follicles as we have on our human bodies. So instead of adding a follicle to represent every piece of hair, we have these hair clumps so that we can fake or cheat how many hairs or how many follicles are actually out there. Now below that we can set the hair to be dynamic or static, and if it's static it's just not going to move at all, so we want these to be dynamic. Then we have points per hair, and the more points we have the more detailed of a simulation it's going to be. Very similar to when we were simulating n-cloth and n-cloth geometry. The more geometry you have, the more definition you're going to get from the simulation. And then, of course, we have our length, and I'll just set that to 5, and we'll choose Create Hairs. Now the hairs are placed on our surface, but what we're really seeing here is the hair clumps. Now those red dots, and let's switch to a shaded mode, those red dots there are the actual follicles. Okay? And the follicle is what's really growing the hair. And the clump, we have 10 hairs in each of those clumps emitting from the follicle. So let's zoom out here, and I'm going to change my timeline to 500, and I'll select the object, and we'll just hit play here real quick, and you can see that gravity takes effect right away, and all of the hair falls down as it should with gravity. Let's return it back to its first frame. And I'm going to go to N Solver and choose Interactive Playback. And when I'm in Interactive Playback mode, I can use my Move tool to actually move the object and get real-time update. And when I moved it off, we can also see that Nucleus node icon sitting out there in the middle. 
Let's return it back to our beginning here and we're just going to create a new scene. And instead of creating hair, let's create a field of grass. Just for an example here, I'm just going to scale up this plane and I'll freeze its transforms and delete its history. And we'll choose end hair, create hair. And we'll use that grid again, but I'm going to just change the length down to two and we'll choose create hairs. And now this doesn't look like grass because our hair is all in a clump. So let's look into our attribute editor and I'll go into my hair system shape node and go to clump and hair shape and we'll just open these up to take a look at the attributes of the hair system itself. So we can get to this icon through our attribute editor by selecting the hair system node itself or even the icons that are represented out there will get you to that hair system shape. Now what I want to do is increase the size of the clump so that we can scatter this across the plane to make it look more like grass. This is controlled by my clump width. And let's just raise this up. And then we also have a clump width scale. And this alters the scale along the length of the hair itself. And this does so based upon the clump. And you can see that this shape here in the graph is actually being applied to the shape of the hair clump. If I want to open that up, I could just delete this last key, which will change the shape here just to a straight line. And now that gives me a nice straight line in my clump as well. And let's go to shaded mode there. We can see that my hair, which should be grass, is still brown. So let's go and change the color of that. And if we keep scrolling down in our attribute editor, we'll see a rollout tab here for shading and we'll open that up. And we have hair color. Let's change that to a green. We'll just make it a little darker. And now that green is placed upon my hair. Now the color itself is not solid. Even though we chose a solid color there, it's being multiplied by the hair color scale. And we have a separate color graph here that we can manipulate and change, basically add any color we want to it to alter the base of that clump or even the tip or anywhere in between. So we can get a very dynamic look to our hair by using this hair color scale. We can also change the opacity or translucency or the specular highlight there right below. In addition, we have color randomization, which is nice to add some deviation so we don't have just a solid appearance to every single strand of hair, or in this case, grass. We'll leave the default values there. Okay, and let's go back up and change that clump width. We can still see a lot of gaps in between here, and it's giving us kind of rows of vegetation as opposed to a solid field of grass. So I'm going to take that clump width and just type in a value there of two. And now we get a much greater separation. Let's add some wind, just like we can do with NCloth. Again, we're utilizing that nucleus node and we'll expand our timeline to play this animation. And just adding those values there, we can see that the hair just kind of bends over and it's blowing in the wind, but doesn't look very convincing. So let's stop that animation and go back to our first frame and go back to my hair system shape. And when the simulation plays there, it all just drops down. And basically this is telling us that the hair is just too soft. It doesn't have any real strength of its own to stay upright. So under my hair system shape node, I'm going to go in and alter some of its dynamic properties. And there's really only one in particular that we need to get to. So we'll choose the dynamic properties rollout there. And I want to alter the bend resistance. We're going to tell it, hey, don't bend this much anymore. And we're actually going to crank this up quite a bit. 
We'll just go to 90. And we'll hit play again. All right, and now we can see we get a much stiffer looking appearance to our grass. And we have a nice subtle breeze blowing on it. I'll switch back to my nucleus and we can increase our wind speed, increase that density a little bit, and then we can add some noise just so that it changes the effect of it there. And it's still looking really uniform in nature. So I'll switch back to that hair system shape node again, going into my hair attributes. And if we go down further, to above our shading attributes is a turbulence rollout. And we can add this turbulence to really give the hair somewhat of its own motion, but it'll really create a nice broken up look here. And we can just add just a little bit. And now we get a really nice swaying to each of our hairs, kind of giving them each their own little strength or lack of strength okay, as the wind blows across them. Right, and of course, we can take that intensity up to get something really varied, but it looks best right now at a much lower value. All right, we'll close that up. And this concludes our video on n-hair.